everyone, Chu here. Today I'm going to show you uh, how to color Rooster Sunrise stamps that I illustrated for Clear Dollar Stamps to look like um, vintage enamel wear. I love the look of the blue with white speckled pots and, and bowls and plates. And you can find it in just about everything. It also looks pretty cool on figurines. Um, we're only going to use three colors and to start off with I have picked um, Tombow number 526. I'm going to base the entire image with this color. Now I'm going to cut the rooster out and um, pop it up on my card so I am not going to be the least concerned about staying in the lines. Actually going out of the lines will help a little bit when you cut it out to uh, avoid having white edges. Just kind of outline the whole thing. And because I want it to look like a piece of pottery, I'm going to make a fake base and we'll cut off some of that stamp image. Okay, then you'll come back in and um, hit the shadow areas. Okay, if you miss any, that's fine. We'll fill it in with um, water. You can use a brush and water or you can use a, a water brush and they do have some at Clear Dollar Stamps that are great. Any brand will work. Just squeeze a little bit of water into the tip and start pulling the color in. Leave some of the shadow shading area. The entire piece is going to be blue. So just um, get in there and scrub that color in. You don't have to be careful. This is a really fun technique. Outside the lines, and I don't care. Okay, you can either let that dry or dry it with a, a heat gun, and I'm going to hit it with a heat gun real quick. If you take the second color over the top of it while the paper is still wet, sometimes it'll bleed into places you don't want it to bleed. Um, now I'm going to use Tombow number 555 for some additional shading. Um, instead of going around each individual thing, um, each individual feather or body part, I'm going to hit the major parts just to give them some definition. That's parts of the head. This is probably something that's a little bit more fluffier than other parts. And let's see. His legs. Under the rows of feathers. And we'll hit a few of the feathers. Under the flower. Okay, then again you'll go in with the water brush and pull some of that color around. You just kind of want to get rid of the harsh lines with this color. I'll pull some down around the bottom of the pottery too. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to dry my brush off a little bit on a paper towel and then come back in and blend some of the harsh lines. Got a little dark. This is a very vivid color. some of it in a little bit. Just kind of work it until it looks like you want it to look. It does, Like I say, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. This is kind of an, an abstract technique. Okay, I'm going to lightly blend it in to the whole piece. Okay, again, let it dry. Now I'm going to take Tombow number N45, which is a uh, gray, and we're going to use it for the deepest shading. We'll go around the base of the piece. And we know it's going to be darker under all of the, uh, the flowers and the feet, everything at the bottom. So lay in the shadow line. Give the flower some definition here. Um, his legs are down below, so it will be darker. Um, some of the lower edges of his feathers. And pull some up in here. Um, again, we're kind of following the same areas where we use the darker blue. And you do want just a fine line of this because it is a, a, a fairly dark color, too. Once again, we pick up the water brush, squeeze a little so that there's water come to the tip, and then blend. You don't want to pull a lot of this color out because it's your definition um, shading color. Pull some up, up in here. It's kind of fun getting messy. Outside the lines. <laughs> Now I'm taking some acrylic white paint. This just happens to be shiny, but it doesn't have to be. This is by Plaid, but any brand will work. And a damp toothbrush. You can tell I've used this a few times for paint. Um, it, I've had it down in the water and I just tapped off the excess. And then I'm just going to put a small dab on the paintbrush. about like that and then I'm going to kind of rub it in a little bit then turn the paintbrush over and flip it and that will give you the speckled appearance And there you have it. This is a fun and easy technique that beginners or novices alike can enjoy. Um, it's just a little different. Uh, and it, well, it can make for a pretty card. You can do it in, in any color that you want. I chose blue today, but um, there are many colors of enamel wear. So just grab you a stamp and have fun. Hope you all come back and visit again. Happy crafting.